in the very beginning act, um, we have the portal actually opening as Katsuk, our front man, sort of makes that happen in a very magical sort of way. And then the audience at that point is expected to sort of start their journey into the portal. And into that, and in that portal, they encounter um, a lot of interesting characters, the first of whom is named Dante, who's an average American man, man who is not doing so well in life. And he then mysteriously starts to come in contact um, with a woman named Beatrice who's whispering little things in his ear about this journey that he should take. And eventually, Beatrice lures him deeper and deeper into the portal and then into the desert. And in the desert, um, while Dante is out there sort of looking for Beatrice and trying to figure what this is all about, he realizes he's being pursued by three different characters. The first of those archetypes, we call him the Sith, um, which is a mythological figure representing um, power or lawful power. Who are you to forsake me? And in this particular case, it's left to the imagination of the audience of how to exactly or abstractly interpret that character. But that can be the power we have over ourselves, sometimes oppressive power. Uh, it can be the power that others exert over ourselves. It could be the power that our parents, perhaps, or school teachers, or our whole society exerted over us in some way. Um, so Dante, his first little encounter is with power. Um, and I think it raises the question of sort of how we humans relate and deal with power in our lives. And I think the show sort of tries to get you to think about that a little bit, or at least experience that. And then the second archetype, um, we call him Cyclops, which is typically a mythological character with one eye. Uh, in this particular case, our Cyclops is a dude in a suit with a monitor for a head. Um, and the monitor is really showing images of Dante and his life back in civilization. Uh, and it's raising the question, well, who is Dante? Does he like himself? Uh, does he want to be somebody else? Um, is it the world who's telling him who he is, or has he sort of gone through the process of discovering who he is? In this particular case, he has not done that yet, and that's part of what he's doing in the desert. And then the third character, or mythological figure he encounters is um, the Reaper. representing death, uh, and an impositive interpretation representing the potential uh, for humans to transform uh, or change themselves in some way by perhaps getting rid of, the molds of their old self, making room uh, for their new self. And he realizes that he has to turn around and confront each of those characters. Um, and he also learns uh, sooner or later that each of those characters are actually a reflection of his own mind, sort of like an inner demon uh, that we all have to some extent. So he realizes that his goal out there in the desert is to deal with each of these characters, each, each of these parts of himself, and learn and grow from that experience. And then at the very end, he journeys up into the mountains for this very mysterious encounter, uh, final encounter with Beatrice.